In this video we're going to look at how to write a complex number in polar form. At the moment we call this rectangular form because we're saying how far across and how far up and that's similar to giving the xy coordinates of um, a point on a graph. Now we're going to do it in terms of polar coordinates where we're going to say how far along it is to that point and through what angle we're going to turn so that we can go in the correct direction. So what's the connection between rectangular and polar? So I've drawn this diagram here. We've got the point X and um, Y marked or the complex number X plus YI and we've got the vector joining the origin to that point. I've also marked the angle. Well, for polar coordinates, we need the length of that line, first of all. So that's just going to be using Pythagoras' theorem, x squared plus y squared um, square rooted. And in polar coordinates, we'd call that r. But we can see that to find r, we have to work out x squared plus y squared square rooted. So the next thing we need to do is to work out um, a substitution for that length across x, because at the moment that's x. But if we use trigonometry, that would be the adjacent side of our right angle triangle. So that would be the equivalent of r cos alpha. We can do the same for the y, and that gives us r sine alpha. Now remember, our original expression is x plus yi. Well, we can change the x for r cos alpha, and we can change the y for r sine alpha to give us r i sine alpha. Now, each of those terms has an r in there, so we can factorise that out to get x plus y i equals r cos alpha plus sine alpha. And then um, we typically refer to our complex number as z. Now, that's a lot to write down every time, r, open bracket, cos alpha plus i and sine alpha, when all we're really interested in is the value of r, which we call the magnitude of our complex number, and alpha, the argument of r, um, complex number. So what we do is use a shorthand which is just z equals r cis alpha. Cis isn't a clever function, it just is a shorthand way of putting um, cos alpha plus i sine alpha. Okay so now for a couple of examples on what to do. So on the first example that we've got here we've just got to write our equation in the form r cis alpha, where r is the magnitude and alpha is the angle. Well, r is just the magnitude, so it's just x squared plus y squared square rooted, which is 13. Alpha is just tan to the minus one of y over x, which is approximately 1.18. We tend to use radians. It is, it's not essential, but it's usually conventional to do that. Now we know r and alpha, we can put those back into our shorthand formula to get z equals, instead of r, 13, cis, instead of alpha, 1.18. Our next um, example is slightly harder because we've got these negative values, so it takes our complex number out of the first quadrant and it puts it down here. Okay, well, let's look at what we actually do here. First of all, we work out r in the same way, so it's just x squared plus y squared square rooted, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. Now let's find alpha. It's a little bit more complicated, let's just have a look. So let's explain what's going on here. We know we're going in the negative direction because we always measure from the positive um, real direction. So we've got that negative there. And then that tan to the minus one of three over four, well that's working out the angle on the left hand side which isn't marked. And so I've done pi take away that angle because pi is a half turn. So I've worked out that angle by working out the smaller one on our right angle triangle and taking it away from pi. That gives me alpha is approximately equal to minus 2.5. I can now put that value into our shorthand formula to get z equals 5 cis minus 2.5. Okay, now for the easy way, going from polar to rectangular. Remember that cis is just shorthand, so we can write it like this. So now we've got this, I can work out what cos of pi over four is and sine of pi over four in my calculator. In both cases, it happens to be root two over two, but this is one of the rare situations where you get the same value for cos and sine. 
So here it is when I've worked out those values. It does simplify down because the 4 over 2 in each term will cancel down to just being a 2. So we get z equals 2 root 2 plus 2i root 2. In the description below you can find a link to a worksheet that has questions that you can try on your own. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay in infield with Winfield.